Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 11.10, Apply Volume Formulas. Our essential question is, how can you use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 11.10. In the last few lessons, we've been finding volume by using our unit cubes. And we've been putting them together to create rectangular prisms to find the volume of a rectangular prism. And we've been noticing that when we do length, times width times height, you find the volume. Length times width times height is our formula, L times W times H. Well, as you can see here, both prisms show the same dimensions and they have the same volume. You just don't see it in unit cube form. So, we would still have 4 times 4, which is 16, and then you would multiply it by your height, which is 3. So another way to do this is to find the base. Now do you see this B right here? That stands for base. Okay? Now think about this. 4 times 4 is 16 cubic inches. Now, if you look over here, this 4 times 4 creates my base. The base is what your rectangular prism is on. That's the we can consider it like a bottom layer because it's the base. So if you look at this whole rectangular prism without showing the cubes, you can still find the volume using the formula. But we can not only just do length times width times height, you can find your base, which is your length times width, which would be 4 times 4. And then you can multiply that by your height, which in this case is 3. So I can mentally find the base by multiplying my length times width, which is 4 times 4 to be 16. So I'm going to write 16 right here because that's my base. 16 times 3 will now be how I will find my volume. 16 times 3, when you work that out, is going to be 48. So we will have 48 cubic inches for our volume. So question number one is already done for you, and this is just to show you that when you want to find the volume, length times width times height, you can plug in these numbers like we've been practicing. My length is going to be 6 feet, my width is 2 feet, and the height is 3 feet. Now if I would like to use my associative property, I'm going to group to find my base. My base will be 6 times 2, which is 12, and we all know 12 times 3 is 36. Now this is measured in feet, and because this is going to be the volume, we're going to make a 3 as an exponent because that stands for cubic feet. So look at number 2. As you can see, our volume formula is length times width times height. So I want you to pause the video, and I want you to find the volume of this rectangular prism, and then we'll check it together. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for this one, you should have found the base, which will be your length times width, which would be 2 times 2, and I know that's going to be 4, and I'm going to multiply that by 5, which is going to be my height. 4 times 5, you should have said is 20. Now this is measured in cubic inches. So our volume is 20 cubic inches. Okay, for number 3, I want you to go ahead and find the volume by following the formula of length times width times height. Now remember, when you multiply your length times width, that's finding your base. And then you'll multiply that by your height. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for this one, you should have plugged in 5 for your length, 5 for your width, and 5 for your height. And then, when you found your base, which is your length times width, you should have 25 cubic centimeters. Now, you should multiply that by 5 centimeters because, as you can see, it's 5 centimeters high. It's like you have 5 layers of your little cubes. Okay, so we're going to have 25 times... 5. And we all know 5 times 5 ones is 25 ones. Regroup my tens. 5 times 2 tens 
is 10 tens plus two more tens is 12 tens. Therefore, you should have 125. And remember, we are measuring these in cubic centimeters. If you are feeling like the expert, go ahead and press pause and solve this one on your own. If you're not and you want the guided practice, continue listening. All right, boys and girls, you should have done length times width times height for your formula. And we want to find the base first, which will be my length times my width. And as you can see, 12 times 3 is what I need to write down for my length and my width. And then, of course, our height shows 5 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and write times 5. Now to solve for my base, which is 12 times 3, I know that to be 36. And I'm going to multiply that by my height of 5. Again, I'm going to use the distributive property. I'm going to break apart my 36 to be a 30 and a 6. And I'm going to multiply both of those by 5. So it'll be 5 times 30 as well as 5 times 6. And now I can find my two partial products. 5 times 30 is 150. And 5 times 6 is 30. So my final product is going to be 180. And remember, we're measuring in feet. So it'll be cubic feet. I hope both of our answers matched. All right, friends, we're going to go ahead and skip over 5 and 6. Unless you want the extra practice, you can do those on your own. But let's go ahead and switch down to number 7, which is our real-world problem solving. It says, a construction company is digging a hole for a swimming pool. The hole will be 12 yards long, 7 yards wide, and 3 yards deep. How many cubic yards of dirt will the company need to remove? So what I know is this. I know I'm trying to find the volume of how the size of the hole is going to be. I know it's going to be 12 yards long, so that'll be my length. I know it's going to be 7 yards wide, so that will be my width. And I know it's going to be 3 yards deep, so I know that's going to be my height. So, following the formula for volume, I would know how many cubic. Now, cubic right here tells me I want to measure it in cubic yards. That tells me I'm looking for the volume. We want to know how much they will need to remove to make that whole. So we know our equation is going to be 12 times 7 times 3 because that is my length times width times height. Go ahead and press pause and solve this answer on your own and then we'll check it together. Press pause now. Okay, when I went ahead and set this up, I decided to group together for my base, 12 times 7, and then I'll multiply that by the height. Well, I know 12 times 7 is 84, and I was able to do that mentally, because I know with my distributive property, 7 times 10 is 70, and 7 times 2 is 14. And we know 70 plus 14 is 84. Now I can take 84 and multiply it by 3. So 84 times 3 is 252 cubic yards. So that's how much dirt they would have to scoop out to create that swimming pool. I believe you're becoming the expert that you could probably do this one on your own as well. It says Amy rents a storage room that is 15 feet long, 5 feet wide, and 8 feet. I'm assuming that means 8 feet high. What is the volume of the storage room? So what we know is it's 15 feet long and 5 feet wide. That would be my base. And it would be 8 feet high. And that would be my height. Go ahead, press pause, and find the volume of this storage unit. And let's see if we match. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, for your base, you should have said that you had 15 feet by 5 feet, which gave you 75 feet, and you're going to multiply it by 8 feet to get your height. So 75 times 8, I'm going to go ahead and do my distributive property. I'm going to break apart my 75 and do a 70 and a 5, and I'm going to multiply both of those by 8, my height, to find my volume. So 70 times 8 plus 5 times 8. 
Okay, 70 times 8 would be 560 because 7 times 8 is 56 and we put our 0 down. Now let's work on the second partial product. 5 times 8 is 40. Now, 560 plus 40 would give me 600. Now remember, this is found in cubic feet. That's like saying that you had 600 boxes in that storage unit that were each one foot by one foot by one foot. You could actually fit 600 in there perfectly. All right, let's move on to homework questions on the back side. So your two practice problems will be for you to practice that'll be similar to what we just studied on this video. Go ahead and do number one and two on your own to find the volume of the two different items. And also don't forget to do questions three through six on your own for spiral review. Please rate yourself at the top of the page if you're level one, novice, two, apprentice, three, practitioner, or four, the expert. And we will check these tomorrow, first thing in class. So have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.